quick interjection. I realized, unfortunately, only after I finished this, that my brain switched over to Greek for a moment in this one, and, and you'll see it right there in the red. Uh, Latin does not have a genitive absolute. That's a Greek that has a genitive absolute. So I, I completely misidentified that. It, it is genitive, but it's not an absolute. It's not while another thirsts, but instead it, it's... I, I, I'm still not exactly sure what the genitive is doing there. It, it, it is possible, I suppose, that Virgil is using a genitive absolute, but that doesn't make any sense. So instead, I, it's it's got to be that the other thirsting is owning. Aphros may be owning from here, but we ourselves from here, the hearer of another thirsting person, or, and we ourselves from here will go to Libya, maybe Libya of the thirsting one or of another thirsting one, something like that. So changed wild of thirsts to thirsting and I'm still kind of lost on how to translate that. Sorry about that mistake. Salutations and welcome. Today we are in Virgil's first eclogue taking a look at lines 70 through 74 but first last time on Virgil's eclogue And there we have it. Here's the rubric. Let's get started. Impius haec tam colta novalia miles habebit. Barbaras has segetis. En co discordia quis produxit miseros. His nos consevimus agros. In serre nunc meleboie pyros. Pone ordine vitis. Item mei Felix quondam pecus ite capella. And now we get to the really impassioned part of his speech. I know this guy's fictional, but still feel for him a little bit. All right. Pious? Nope. Height? Nope, 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 nope. Here we go. Habebit. B-I-T there from the future. It says third singular. Active and indicative. So you want a singular subject. Hike could work. Colto, Noella. All of these could work, except for Tom, of course, as our subject, but then we need to ask, well, which ones can't work as our subject? Well, first of all, culta. At first blush, it, it does look like it could be a first, but this is actually cultum culti, and so it's a neuter, or no. Brain crashing again. My gosh, it's, it's doing a lot that a lot. Well, I suppose that's what happens when you're about to leave your... Well, here. So, Novalia, no, Colta, yeah, so, yes, 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 correct, correct. Colta is Coltum Colt E, so Colta is a neuter plural. So it can't be with Habibit, because this isn't Greek. And Miles, Miles is not accusative. Miles, Militis, is the form, it's a third declension, so it can't be anything except nominative. So Miles has to be our subject, with impious, with that U-S. All right. That took me a lot longer to do than it should have. And I had prepared this beforehand. Weird. Masculine. Novalia Colta. Uh, this is from Col uh, Colo Colore. Don't remember the third part. Coltum. So it's a, the perfect passive participle. Novalia, of course, takes the accusative plural neuter as does hike. And I think Tom we can translate 
as uh, going either with MPS or just connecting this clause with the pre previous clause. So, yeah, probably with MPS. So impious a soldier will have this colta novalia. Colta means tilled, tended, planted. You can talk about cultivated land as a substantive. And novalia means plowed again or plowed for the first time. So I think it's going to be plowed again, implying that Meliboyus has already done the work for it, and then a soldier is going to come in and, and reap the benefits of the work that Melobius do, has, has done. We'll have this. Moving on. Barbarus has segetus, no verb, so that's going to be a habibit implied again. U.S. right there, nominative, singular, masculine. And then has and segetus. Has tells us that segetus is going to be feminine, and this is plural and accusative. Both of them together. A barbara, per person who says barbara, barbarian, will have. Did I say this? These. Sorry. These. Yes. These segates are cornfields. Fields are just so oh, soil. So I'm going to say cornfields. Oh, I didn't see the question mark. Will. So will a so impious soldier have these plowed, again, cultivated lands. A barbarian, these cornfields. And lo, quo, ablative discordia, quis produxit. It right there, duco ducere. So we have a third person singular perfect tense. And this means to bring forward, to bring out, to extend. And then who is going to be our subject? Well, we have kiwis right there with the is. And then discordia there with the a appears to be going with kiwis. Because it can go with miseros or quo. Because they're the wrong gender and number in this case. So kiwis can also take that because kiwis is one of those words which fulfill. It's a noun which we would call common gender as we had one previously, and I don't remember, was that Coleman? I, I don't remember. But anyway, in this case, it's the talking about the women, probably the, the wives of the soldiers, the probably new wives, since uh, Roman soldiers, I don't think, were allowed to marry, but they, they could have concubines. So, nominative, singular, feminine for both of these, this one technically a common. And then miseros with the OS, accusative, plural, nothing to modify. So then that means that this is going to be substantive and it's masculine. And then quo, quo is ablative, singular, and it also doesn't have anything to modify. It can't be modifying that. It could be that. Lo, from whom? From the barbarian, I, I suppose. Or it could just be by which, in which. I, I think I'm going to go with the barbarian, so masculine possibility. Lo, from, or with whom. Discordia, this would be discordant, disagreeing, inharmonious. I'm going to go with Discord. From whom? A discordant. <laughs> uh, well, it can't be a citizen as a woman. Okay, I think I know what's going on here. The dictionary that I've been using, Cassell's, lists QS as a common. And then I think what must be going on there is that later on in Latin, Cuis was used as a common gender noun. But during Virgil's time, 
it was a feminine noun, and hence discordia. So that's that's a discrepancy there. That's that's why this is marked as common and that, but used as feminine. All right. So yes, later Latin common gender, but in this case, it's a feminine title for what would just be a masculine thing. Um, and then that would change how quo works, since it's not going to be the woman because she can't be a citizen. I think. So from which maybe buy is another option there. Not really. Clearing that up at all. A discordant citizen will bring forward, bring out, I think extend, as the third option makes most sense with Miseros. Extended the miseries. His nos consewimus. M-U-S is our ending right there. I is the connecting vowel, vowel with the V. This is from uh, consero, conservo, conservare, consewi. So we have perfect tense. And this means to plant, to sow, or to cover. But I think it only means to cover if it's the sun that's the subject. So if the sun covers the land, maybe the idea there is that the sun is sowing light upon the land. All right, nos, emphatic, nominative, plural. And then his. His could be the dative or ablative plural of hic, hic, hoc. But then it doesn't match agros. And then maybe this... The, the implied thing here is that Meliboius is actually physically pointing to something when he's saying this. With these, conseguimos agros. Yeah, I, I think I think that makes some sense. And uh, if, if this would be recited, then that would be perfect opportunity for the cantor to do that, to gesture with his hand. Yeah, that makes sense. Probably wrong, though. So, ablative or, ooh. No, 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 no. That does make sense. But what makes more sense, not an ablative, but in fact a dative, plural, masculine, barbarous, kiwis, and miles as the referent. For these, we did this. And this is, would be showing Meliboius' anger. For these men... We ourselves sowed the fields. And then we move on to our next clause. In serre, this is in sero, so it's not the infinitive there, but just an e, which means a imperative, second singular. Noun, and this means to graft in, to implant. Uh, it, so that that can mean what they do when, when they graft a part of a vine into another vine, when they, they make hybrid fruit, or it can just mean to uh, move something from. And I'm guessing on this part, like replanting a plant somewhere else, like taking a sapling and moving it. Which then makes sense since we've got pyros as the object. Now, replant maybe? Graft. Oh, and he's speaking to himself in the vocative. That E. Pear trees, or just the pears, could stand for either the plant or the fruit. Pona, here we have another imperative. No need to parse that. And this means to place. So then place ordo ordinis. And this is a masculine, so with the E we have ablative. 
and then witis. Witis could come from two different words. It could come from um, wita, and then would be dative or ablative plural life. And then as a third declension, which I, I, I don't remember if it's the nominative this and the genitive are identical, but probably, then this could mean the vine. That would be place in order, place something in order of the vine or place something in order with life. And I think vine makes more sense. So probably genitive singular. And I think it's feminine either way. I'm going to note the other one, or dative, ablative, plural, feminine. Okay, moving on. Ite, this is going to be the plural imperative from eo. It's a second plural present. With may I right there as clearly a nominative plural feminine. Go, my, and the editors of the text here think that there's a comma separating these two with this as probably a vocative. And that does make sense since this is singular and pecus is singular and not even the right gender for may I. So we don't know what this may I refers to. So I'm going to say, yeah, just go my things for the moment. Felix, condom pecus, pecus pecaris, I think. Or it could be pecus, pecus, the fourth declension. As a third, it's neuter. Sorry, not pecu, pecus, pecus, but pecu, pecus. As a fourth, this would be genitive, singular, neuter. As a third, it's nominative, accusative, or vocative, singular, neuter. And we don't want a genitive, because that doesn't make any sense with felix right there, which is a single termination adjective. That means it has one form for all the genders. So I think this is going to be the third declension one as a vocative singular. And it, of course, means cattle, herd, flock, something along those lines. And then quondam is an adverb. Oh, sorry. Hold that over here. Adverb meaning at a certain time, formerly, or once. I'm going to put that at the beginning of this clause. Once happy or once fortunate. Flock. Ite, another imperative. Go. Kapili, which we've seen before. A-E, of course, nominative, plural, and feminine. And this is the she-goats. Go. Period. So then I think this, we, we might have one more. Here, I'm going to check my notes. Uh, yeah, we, we have one more little bit from Melobius. And this here, we're, we're reading his sorrowful cries to his friend. And then I, I, don't, I don't know what he says next. But, uh, yeah, pretty depressing at this point. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope you have a better life than this poor guy. Wally. What? You're still awake? Why are you still here, then? You should be reading a book. Or, if not reading, you should watch one of these other videos. Please like, subscribe, leave a comment. See you next week.